San Diegans accomplish great things every day. We care about our neighbors and our community. We are proud of our diversity. We are resilient. We hold our leaders accountable. We live in one of the most dynamic cities in America. The San Diego Union Tribune, telling San Diego's story for more than 150 years. Welcome to the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. My name is Arthur Z, and my new and collected poems, The Glass Constellation, has just been published by Copper Canyon Press. The book collects poems from all 10 uh, of my published books of poetry, and it also includes 26 new poems. Poetry has a vital role to play in our lives. It helps us slow down and see clearly, feel deeply, and envision what truly matters. In this difficult and challenging time, I believe poetry provides an inner compass which helps us navigate through the world. The first poem I'm going to read is called Midnight Loon. Burglars enter an apartment and ransack drawers. Finding neither gold nor cash, they flee, leaving the laundry and bathroom lights on. They have fled themselves. I catch the dipping pitch of a motorcycle, iceberg hues in clouds, the gravel courtyards, a midnight garden, as in Japan, raked to resemble ocean waves in moonlight. Whirlpool eddies, circular ripples, and nothing is what it quite appears to be. When I unlatch the screen door, a snake slides under the weathered decking. I spot the jagged hole edged with glass where a burglar reached through the window, but no one marks the poplars darker with thunder and rain. In moonlight, I watch the whirlpool hues of clouds drift over our courtyard, adobe walls, and gate. And though there is no loon, a loon calls out over the yard, over the water. Courtyard Fire At autumn equinox, we make a fire in the courtyard. Sparks gust into the black air. And all seasons are enfolded in these flames. Snow gathers and tips the lilac twigs. A stinkhorn rises out of dirt below a water spout. Ants climb the peony stalks. And gazing into coals, I skydive and pass through stages of youth. At first, I climb a tower, and looking out, find the world tipped. Then I dash through halls. If ripening is all, what can the dead teach us? We who must rage and lust, hurdle zigzagging between cars in traffic, affirm, the call to abandon illusions is a call to abandon a condition that requires illusions. And as I pull the cord, spring rips and blooms. On landing, I sway on earth. This next poem is formally one run-on sentence. It's called Salt Song, and it's actually in the voice of salt speaking to a human being. Salt Song. And um, let me just say as a preface, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and uh, one of the Pueblo tribes in the western part of the state are Zuni Indians, and the other uh, tribe mentioned, the Miwoks, are in Northern California along the coast. Salt Song. Zunis make shrines on the way to a lake where I emerge. 
and Miwoks gather me out of pools along the Pacific. The cheetah thirsts for me. And when you sprinkle me on ribeye, you have no idea how I balance silence with thunder in crystal. You dream of butterfly hunting in Madagascar, spelunking through caves echoing with dripping stalactites. And you don't see how I yearn to shimmer an orange aurora against flame. Look at me in your hand. In Egypt, I scrubbed the bodies of kings and queens. In Pakistan, I zigzag upward through 26 miles of tunnels before drawing my first breath in sunlight. If you heat a kiln to 2,380 degrees and scatter me inside, I vaporize and bond with clay. In this unseen moment, a potter prays because my pattern is out of his hands. And when I touch your lips, you salivate. And when I dissolve on your tongue, your hair rises. Ozone unlocks. A single stroke of lightning sizzles to earth. This next poem draws on some science. It's called Doppler effect. And of course, uh, Doppler effect is sort of the rising and falling pitch uh, of sound waves. Like if you're hearing a train pass by, the rise and fall as it disappears. And in this particular poem, I was thinking of, um, in a way, passages of consciousness, how they sort of rise and recede. Doppler effect. Stopped in cars, we are waiting to accelerate along different trajectories. I catch the rising pitch of a train. Today, 109 people died in a stampede converging at a bridge. Radioactive water trickles underground toward the Pacific Ocean. Nickel and copper particulates contaminate the Brocade River. Will this planet sustain 10 billion people? Ah, switch it. A spider plant leans toward a glass door, and six offshoots dangle from it. The more I fingered the clay slab into a bowl, the more misshapen it became. Though I have botched this, bungled that, the errancies reveal it would not be better if things happened just as I wished. A puffer fish inflates on deck. A burst of burnt rubber rises from pavement. I have a friend, Meridel Rubenstein, a photographer who uh, a number of years ago was going to the Tigris and Euphrates River and doing a photographic study of people who lived on floating islands of reeds. And um, we had lunch one day and she showed me these marvelous photographs of, again, people living on these uh, islands of floating reeds. And that uh, sparked this poem. And the other landscape in this poem is uh, in Powaki, New Mexico, about 20 miles north of Santa Fe, where I live. The poem is called Adamant. Deer browse at sunrise in an apple orchard, while honey locust leaves litter the walk. A neighbor hears gunshots in the bosque and wonders who's firing at close range. I spot bear prints near the Powaki River, but see no sign of the reported mountain lion. As chlorophyll slips into the roots of a cottonwood and the leaves burst into yellow gold, 
I wonder, where's our mortal flare? You can travel to where the Tigris and Euphrates flow together and admire the inventions of people living on floating islands of reeds. You can travel along an archipelago and hike among volcanic pools steaming with water and sulfuric acid, but you can't change the eventual adamant body. Though death might not come like a curare-dipped dart blown out of a tube or slam at you like surf breaking over black lava rock, it will come. It will come. And it unites us, brother, sister, boxer, spinner, in this pact while you inscribe a letter with trembling hand. A number of years ago, my wife and I were moving from Hakona, a small village about 20 miles north of Santa Fe, into Santa Fe, and um, our daughter had a globe, just one of these globes that you can spin and put on the desktop. And uh, I put it into a box, and when we moved and I unpacked that box, I looked at the globe and I started looking at different places on that. And of course, I was also thinking about the globe, the planet that we live on. So there's sort of two globes in this poem, unpacking a globe. I gaze at the Pacific and don't expect to ever see the heads on Easter Island, though I guess at sunlight rippling the yellow grasses sloping to shore. Yesterday, a doe ate grass in the orchard. It lifted its ears and stopped eating when it sensed us watching from a glass hallway. In his sleep, a veteran sweats diffusing a landmine. On the globe, I mark the battle of the Coral Sea. No one frets at that now. A poem can never be too dark, I nod, and staring at the Kenai, hear ice breaking up along an inlet. Yesterday, a coyote trotted across my headlights and turned his head but didn't break stride. That's how I want to live on this planet, alive to a rabbit at a glass door and flower where there is no flower. This next poem is called The White Orchard and it's an experiment in repetition. Oftentimes poems will say, start the beginning of a line with the same word. So you could have like here, such and such happens, here, such and such happens. In this particular poem, I wanted to play with repetition where each line picked up a word or words from the previous line, but a reader wouldn't quite know which word or words would be picked up in advance. So the repetitions are woven in uh, more subtly, and it's, um, I think, more a part of the um, essential framework to the rhythm uh, and music of the poem. Again, the White Orchard. Under a supermoon, you gaze into the orchard. A glass blower shapes a glowing orange mass into a horse. You step into a space where you once lived. Crushed mica glitters on plastered walls. A raccoon strolls in moonlight along the top of an adobe wall. Swimming in a pond, we notice a reflected cottonwood on the water. Clang, a deer leaps over the gate. Every 15 minutes, an elephant is shot for its tusks. 
you mark a bleached earless lizard against the snowfall of this white page. The skins of eggplants glistening in a garden. Our bodies glistening by firelight. Though skunks once ravaged corn or bright moments cannot be ravaged. Sleeping near a canal, you hear lapping waves. At dawn, waves lapping and the noise of men unloading scallops and shrimp. No noise of gunshots. You focus on the branches of hundred-year-old apple trees. Opening the door, we find red and yellow rose petals scattered on our bed. Then light years. You see pear branches farther in the orchard as the moon rises. Branches bending under the snow of this white page. Uh, this next and last poem is called Transpirations. It's also written in one line stanzas. And uh, as I said, the glass constellation tracks poems written uh, across 10 books, uh, 50 years of writing. And in the recent group of new poems, I find I'm writing a lot of poems in the form of one-line stanzas where I want some silence and breathing room uh, in between the language to give a reader uh, time to just sort of let the images uh, rest and sink in. Transpirations. Leafing branches of a backyard plum. Branches of water on a dissolving ice sheet. Chatter of magpies when you approach. Lilacs lean over the road, weighted with purple blossoms. Then the noon sun shimmers the grasses. You ride the surge into summer. Smell of pinyon crackling in the fireplace. Blued notes of a saxophone in the air. Not by sand running through an hourglass, but by our bodies igniting. Passing in the form of vapors from a living body. This world of orange sunlight and wildfire haze. World of iron filings pulled toward magnetic south and north. Pool of quicksilver when you bend to tie your shoes. Standing, you well up with glistening eyes. Have you lived with utmost care? Have you articulated emotions like the edges of leaves? Adjusting your breath to the seasonal rhythm of grasses. Gazing into a lake on a salt flat and drinking in reflection the Milky Way. In closing, I'd like to say that uh, you can purchase the glass constellation. Again, here's what it looks like. It's over 500 pages. And um, you can purchase the glass constellation from the independent bookseller, bookshop.org, uh, which is online at bookshop.org slash shop slash SDFOB. Um, my name again is Arthur C. Uh, thank you so much for joining me at the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. It's been a pleasure to be here and share my work with you. Thank you for being here. Take care.
Headlines are everywhere, all day. But for the complete story, count on NBC7 to keep you up to date. Taking a look at what happens for you folks on the Inland Valley. And as stories change, our commitment is constant. NBC7 is coverage you count on. Hello, I'm Jose Cruz. I'm the CEO for the San Diego Council on Literacy. We work with a network of 29 youth, adult, and family literacy programs that annually serve 160,000 residents of all ages at no cost. Our mission is to unite the community to support literacy. It's an exciting year for us. It's our 35th anniversary. It's also the fifth anniversary of the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. The San Diego Council on Literacy is a beneficiary of this event. So when you participate, you support literacy, especially through the author panels um, and just in general. So um, when you participate in this event, you also make it possible for another person, a child or an adult, to improve their reading and writing skills so they can read the books that you read. We have our favorite event activities. We like the story time hour, and you probably have your favorites too. So we hope that you'll join us at the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books and learn more too about the work of the San Diego Council on Literacy by going to literacysandiego.org. Thank you.